CVC Clastic Reservoirs can be deposited in many different depositional environments, from terrestrial to marine settings. They will be described from the more proximal to the more distal. Alluvial fans can provide reservoir fascias. They are deposited along the front of mountains, along the side of major valleys, or at the side of glacier ice. The fans commonly develop into low-angle half cones. Individual alluvial fans are commonly small. Most are only few kilometers across and the largest rarely reach more than tens of kilometers. As a consequence, reservoirs that are developed in alluvial fan sequences are commonly small, unless the fans are amalgamated. The size of the grains tends to be thinner as we go farther from the slope. Indeed, conglomerates are deposited close to the source and silts are deposited farther. However, the sediments are poorly sorted and there is a high content in fine grain even close to the source. So the reservoir quality of these sediments tends to be poor. Still in emerged continental setting, Aeolian dunes can be hydrocarbon reservoirs once buried. They are sand bodies which can develop within deserts or adjacent to sand beaches. Some dunes do occur alone, but more often they occur in massive sand areas. They are large sedimentary bodies which commonly exceed 100 square kilometers. They contain well sorted round grains and cementation is avoided such reservoir will be both porous and permeable. Iodian sandstones are uncommon as a reservoir because they have low preservation potential. The reservoir quality of most Iodian sandstones may be excellent. Prospective fascias can also be deposited in lacustrine environment. The lacustrine sandstones are deposited in fans which share many similarities with their marine counterparts. A more precise description will be done later on. However, the volumes of lacustrine fans are small and, correspondingly, the field size are not important. There is an important mud content and a variable net to gross. The reservoir quality is variable. Still in continental environments, hydrocarbons can be found in fluvial sandstones. River complexes commonly form extensive and thick sand and mud bodies. There are many examples of large petroleum accumulation within such sand bodies. Rivers have a variety of forms, but their main channels may be braided or meandering, or anything between the two hand members. We will discuss the geometry of these two categories. Braided rivers are as seen on the picture. They are commonly very sandwich. As a consequence, the net to growth of petroleum reservoirs developed in such environments are commonly very high, usually between 0.7 and 1. Thicknesses are commonly in the range of many tens of meters. The reservoir quality tends to be very good. Meandering rivers can also form extensive sand bodies that may occur as petroleum reservoirs. Net to growth in meander systems is typically less than in braided system and range between 0.4 and 0.6. However, locally, higher and lower ratio can occur due to the way in which the sandy channel stacking is controlled. As with the braided system, Massive oil and gas fields can develop in the sandstones of ancient meander system. Going more distal, deltas, where they are rich in sand, can form important reservoir bodies. The sand is carried by the river. Often, the best sandstones in such complexes are of excellent reservoir quality. However, because of the intimate mixture of many different lithologies, Abundant barrier and baffles to fluid flow often complicate reservoirs that have developed in such settings. The geometry of delta systems and the associated marginal marine lithologies is controlled by the interplay of wave, tidal and river energy. The triangular diagram developed by Galloway and Elliott illustrates the dominant process in each modern delta. 
three delta types are observed river dominated, wave dominated, and tide dominated delta. The size and the geometry of the sand bodies that develop in the delta depend partially of each type of delta. Still more distal, shallow marine sandstones can accumulate hydrocarbons. They are sands deposited in beach or shore face environments. Almost no mud is deposited in those areas. They are relatively simple and homogeneous. Net to gross, porosity and permeability can be very high. There are no fixed rules to how thick those bodies are. The thickness may vary from a few meters to a few hundred meters. They can be ideal reservoirs. Last but not least, submarine fans commonly develop at the base of slope within sedimentary basins. Sand and mud are transported via mass flow, gravity-induced processes from the shallow to deep water. Fans can vary dramatically in size, from few kilometers across to thousands of kilometers. Most of the largest fans tend to be rich in mud and poor in sand. Net to gross may be 0.1 or less. Even though, because of their large size, areas with higher than average sand concentration can be viable reservoirs. Sand rich fan systems, with net to gross commonly higher than 0.6, despite being considerably smaller than their mud prone counterparts, can themselves be huge.